everyone, I'm Rachel Poli with Ari Meglin, and we're your hosts for the Merry Writer Podcast. We're on episode 34, and this week's question is, how do you write male characters? Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening so you never miss a show. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. So tomorrow on November 19th is International Men's Day. To honor that, Ari and I thought we'd tackle an interesting writing topic that most people have questions about how to write from the point of view of the opposite gender. So as women, we can't really say the quote unquote right way to write male characters. So we're going to talk about some tips on how to go about it. The first is to simply talk with the men in your life. Nobody knows men better than men themselves. Depending on the type of male characters you write in your story, give give your book to male friends and family and have them read it and ask them if it's realistic. Ask them if men walk like a certain way or talk like a certain way. And you can also just observe the men in your life and see what they do and how they react to certain things. Like go ahead and prank them. If there's something simple in your book that you can recreate in real life, go ahead and prank them and see how they respond to it. I just thought of that one at the top of my head. (laughs) I love that you're advising our listeners to prank their like husbands and partners and everything. (laughs) And it's harmless. But hey, why not? You might as well have fun with it. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Uh, (laughs) I'm trying to think of how to move on from that. Oh my. Uh, right, I, I, I agree. Definitely, definitely talk to the men in your life. And you made a point about the fact that depending on the type of character you're writing, every, uh, all humans are different, male, female, whatever, everyone is different. So there is no cookie cutter image of a specific male, specific female. However, there will be things such as shared social experiences and social norms that will come from genders especially in our sort of society but de- as Rachel said depending on the type of character you want to write will depend on the sort of uh, men in your life who you might want to talk to so if you're trying to write an older character who has um, a family and has been working hard all their life you might be edging more towards speaking to a, a grandparent if you're creating a younger more modern character you might be looking towards more you know younger family members so it is definitely important to pick who you speak to and get a nice overall look and definitely speak to more than one because again everyone's experiences are a little bit different everyone's um how they're how people are raised are different depending on where they live and things like that so definitely speak to lots of different people and get a nice overall view if you're struggling with anything and definitely ask them awkward questions because they're, you know, if we're going to be pranking them, nothing says it more than sitting a, a friend down and asking a really awkward question that makes them squirm a little bit. Definitely. Yeah. Like I said, you're going to have fun with it. <laughs> but that's true. You, you got to talk to people who you trust and you have to um, talk to people you're close with and like you can be open with and they feel comfortable being open with you depending on said awkward questions. And I do agree, you have to talk to more than one person. Like everybody has different experiences and different opinions on certain things. So you have to be open with that. Which kind of brings me on to my next point is that you need to be open to feedback. As I said earlier, you know, if you have a male character, even a male protagonist, and you should give your book to like a couple of men in your life and see how they see how they react to it and what their thoughts are you have to take their feedback with a grain of salt of course because as i said everyone is different you should get feedback from everyone and anyone but when you have specific questions pertaining to like a certain gender then you should really focus on that gender in real life and see their thoughts on it so there was one time years ago when my writers group first formed it we we probably only knew each other for about like a year or two at this point and at the time my mystery novel was written in George's point of view and it would he was in he was written in first person and then it got changed to third person with him as the POV character 
but now it's in Lila's point of view and the book is so much better in my own opinion. But when I first gave them the first couple of uh, chapters, the host of my writer's group and another member of my writer's group, both males, argued for 40 minutes about George and his personality because one was saying, you know, George is unique and because I didn't want him to be like a cliched detective, like he's not depressed, he's not drowning himself in alcohol or anything like that. But the member of my writer's group called him some names that I probably shouldn't say on the podcast. And he wasn't necessarily trying to be rude. He was just trying to get his point across. And he was like, no, this is how men should be written. They're strong and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it was just like the cliched, like, buff male character. And I was like, mm, no, that's not George. And I actually, I never said this uh, to anybody, but I actually got home that night and the next morning I opened up my email and he had actually rewrote my chapter and he was like, <gasps> this is how I meant it. And I, I just like, didn't even respond to him and I just like left it alone. But I was like, that's crossing a line. I like, I got oh. you right after you were arguing over 40 minutes last night. Like, thank you. Ah, that is, that is so wrong. It's like, if you'd said what would you suggest or what how would you write it maybe but to just randomly rewrite your chapter and then send it to you oh wow that's wow that is yeah, so bad that was crossing a line i was like mm, nope <laughs> mm, yeah i couldn't imagine anyone doing that I, I just just taking that kind of liberty it's like hey i know you didn't ask for it but here is all the crap i uh, was talking about yep yeah and i mean that's mm. i mean that's what i mean like you have to ask more than one person because Somebody will have one opinion and another person will have a totally different opinion. Whereas the host of my writer's group was like, this is how Rachel wrote the character. This is his personality. And men can totally have this personality. Whereas the other member of my group was like, no, men only have this one personality and they're tough and that's it. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So it, it was a long night. <laughs> <laughs> the other members of my group, we were just like watching a tennis match, like, you know, our heads going back and forth, watching them, like, argue. Oh, that sounds painful. That really yeah. does. It was and nothing. That... It was a learning experience. <laughs> yeah. In bad. many different ways. <laughs> <laughs> that actually leads me on to my point, which is, while 100%, yep, we need to talk to men in our lives or, you know, uh, in critique groups or anything like that we need to get their feedback we need to get their opinions it's also important to speak to women because I, as you say it's like they're, they're important too to come up with what sort of characters they would like to see or whether the character you've written you know if you're if you're aiming for it, the, the the male character to come across a certain way for maybe the female characters if that's what you're writing and then you hand it to a female critique part partner and they're like, yeah, that doesn't come across at all. So it is important to also speak to, to women. It, obviously, you shouldn't just be asking women about male characters. You do need to speak to men. But it always takes me back to the 80s and early 90s movies where, if you, if you watch them now, the number of, of movies that had like creepy stalker slash persistent weirdo protagonists and these were meant to be the heroes these were meant to be the positive characters in these movies and watching them as a woman it's just like oh painful to watch them cross you know cross lines and 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 and, and see that the creepy stalker behavior is seen as as loving and persistent and determined when really it was just stalker behavior and th I'm, I'm really glad we have started to move away from crap like that with like movies and books, although they do seem to keep creeping in. Now, obviously, if you're writing an, an antagonist or a villain or a creepy side character and you want them to be a bit stalkerish or a bit of a weirdo, fine, that's great. But if you're writing a protagonist, if you're writing the hero and they have weirdo behavior that comes across as really awkward and creepy, that's a no-no. I want strong male characters, and I'm not just talking physically. You want them to have compassion, to be thoughtful, to have more dimensions than just the, this guy is strong and 
aggressive. It's like, it's kind of been done to death. Not saying that you don't need to throw in a bit of aggression, not saying they don't have to be strong. That's what, you know, that's the way it is sometimes. But if that is the entirety of your male character, it feels more like a stereotype. And I'm not saying I don't want dark heroes or anti-heroes, but personally, I am tired of asshole heroes. <laughs> and personally, it sounds like the, the guy in your writer's group was trying to push slowly towards your character being a bit of an asshole and fitting yeah. into that, you know, stereotype. Yeah, it's like, like it. this whole different territory that I don't want to touch. <laughs> <laughs> You bring up such a good point, though. Have you ever seen the movie 27 Dresses? Yes. I watched that movie over the summer for, like, the first time in, like, a while. I've seen the movie plenty of times, but it's been a little while. And I watched it over the summer. And I was, like, the the main, the male lead is exactly like that. He is a stalker, persistent weirdo. and. I'm like, none of this is okay. I'm like, why Like, why do people enjoy this movie? Like, this is not okay. This is creepy. If a guy did this to me, I'd be freaking out. It's like, just, I don't know. It's, it's true. It's like, you see things in a different light, especially this day and age. But I, I agree. I want, I want awesome male characters that are like human beings instead of just like the cardboard cutout buff guy, you know? Yeah, it's very one-dimensional. It's almost the same as, you know, the, the woman who loves shoes and shopping and talks about kids. It's like, is that it? Is that her entire personality? It's like, no, just, you know, the, these characters need to be fully formed. They need to have thoughts and opinions and real personalities and connections to more than one or two emotions because that is real. You know, people do have more than one or two emotions. And I think the problem is we get hit with all these stereotypes and both men and women have a habit of just sort of like assimilating them and then churning out this thing. I mean, as I said, I'm seeing it a lot less, but every now and then a book will come out or a movie will come out and it's, it's like watching something from the early 90s or the 80s and you're thinking do people still really like this? And again, if you're, if you're aiming to do this to, to make the character darker or if there's a really, really good reason that you've written that character like that, fine. But if you're, you're literally just slotting in this protagonist into like a three-word character style, you know, strong, aggressive, manly. Uh, yeah, I'm getting a bit tired of that. Yeah, and I think... I think people kind of hop on this trend that when there's a certain character, whether it's male or female, I know we're focusing on males for this episode, but any character really, like if there's a super, if, if a book or a movie comes out and people are like, oh my God, this specific character, I absolutely love him. And like, there's like this trend that like this one character has this fan base around them. And then after that, these movies and books they all have like that same character because they're hopping on this trend. And then it gets to the point where the character itself becomes a cliche. And I think cliches are totally fine to use. I know like some people are like avoid tropes, avoid cliches. I think they're okay to use like moderately. And if you can put your own little tiny spin on it, I think it's kind of fine. But yeah, people just, they just like, they, they latch onto something that's worked for somebody else and they just roll with it. But with that said, another way you can research how to write male protagonists is to read books with male protagonists. Read books that you like, read books that you don't like, and see how the male protagonist like reacts to certain situations and see how the author writes that character, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. If you're writing a male detective, read books with male detectives. If you're writing a male cowboy, read westerns with male cowboys. I get, well, cowboys are all male, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. talking, talking of books, I think it might be an idea to, um, for us to share some of our favorite male writers since we're talking about men since it's international men's day so i think maybe in our description below this 
podcast, wherever you listen to it, I think it would be an idea to add some links to some of our favourite male writers, especially if they have male protagonists as well, just to just to share the love with our male writer friends. I think that'd be a good idea. Just throw a couple down there. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah. No, I think that sounds good. Now you got me thinking. <laughs> But just, I'm just going to segue back to what we were talking about. Um, and I'm going to go back to s- stereotypes because I think that's one of those things that people seem to, they just never die. And, you know, we've talked about like cliches and things and yeah, it's okay with a bit. But I think the male stereotypes that I see a lot still is your emotionally devoid, he- um, your emotionally devoid hero. And again, don't mind some characters a bit aloof. Don't mind if there's explanation. But if that is the go-to, that they have to be devoid of emotion, they have to be stoic all the time, it feels a bit samey with a lot of other things. The same with the nerdy genius, where it's some some guy, usually in the tech industry, who's like, you know, the best hacker or just just great at everything. But again, it it seems to be that that becomes their entire personality. You know, there's nothing wrong with making your character a stoic hero. There's nothing wrong with having a nerdy genius. But again, if you're not fleshing these characters out, if they begin and end with nerdy and genius, it's boring. The same with the everyone has to be a martial art expert. Again, it feels very 90s as well. It always seemed to be a, you know, every guy has to know martial arts. (laughs) And it's so funny because, like, those movies and books, they're so bad, but they're so good at the same time. And it's like, why, why did we like this stuff? <laughs> it's like a no-brain. Well, I did, I did watch a few recently, and it actually made me cringe watching them again older. Because, obviously, I was born in the 80s, and I, was, I grew up with these. And then watching and realizing, wow, this was the kind of crap I was exposed to as I was getting older. You know, it it does kind of, it can warp how you see people. And it's like, I'm so glad I was able to not let that stuff affect me. So, so it's like, yeah, this kind of creepy, you know, creepy personality type. It's great. They're awesome. It's like, no, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You watch it when you get older and you're like, what, what is this? <laughs> like, seriously, how, like, how did we survive some of these things? I really don't know. <laughs> How to describe the 80s with the bad hair and the, and the <laughs> awful outfits. So I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, try and avoid like tight stereotypes. You know, it really is. Like, to be honest, it's with every character, but we're talking about male characters. So that's what we're talking about. But you need to round your characters out. They need to have full personalities, full thoughts and emotional ranges. They need to have opinions beyond you know, whatever connects them to their stereotype. That is, if you want to write good male characters, I think that it's things like that you need to think about. Yeah, like, as you said, with any character, you need to be careful with stereotypes, and they all need to be well-rounded and fully developed and everything like that. They all have to have a purpose, blah, blah, blah. But with males, yeah, they're, like, I mean, I mean, it's, it's the same with females, too, but males, I think as... As women, we tend to, like, pick out the male stereotypes a little bit more as well, too. Yeah. Which I think you mentioned earlier, like, you know, talk to females as well as males when discussing male protagonists and characters in general. I think I, I think I read somewhere, and I haven't checked this, so I might be completely wrong, but I, um, I remember reading somewhere that when they were creating the Disney movie Tangled, when they were creating the male protagonist, um, which is Flynn Rider, yep. they actually spoke to women as well. As, I don't know if they spoke to men as well, but they spoke to women about what they would like for like the male hero. And it's, it's said to be one of the reasons why his character has been so enjoyed by like female viewers of, of all the Disney movies. It's like he's the, the character that people, if they said like, if you, which, which of the male Disney princes or heroes whatever they're called do you like the most he always seems to rank really high and it's suggested that women had a lot to do with that because they actually were able to say well actually we like this kind of personality and this kind of trait and this kind of trait and I think that is just showing how important it is to get both views 
whether you're writing males or females. And don't worry, we are going to be talking about females uh, on International Women's Day. So don't worry, we'll get, we'll get to them too. But it really does help to speak to both to get a nice overall feel. And just a, a, another point I've just come up with, try and make all your characters different. One of the issues with stereotypes or kind of slotting characters into these really narrow bands like um, the person on your writing critique seemed to have a suggestion of, is that you can end up with all the male characters or all the female characters very similar because you've literally wedged them into a really small like personality, if you will. And that's, that's kind of dull. You want a nice variety of people. And just because we say things like, you know, try and avoid extreme stereotypes like, you know, the emotionally devoid hero, it doesn't mean that we suggest you go way to the other side and have your hero wearing his heart on his sleeve and, and crying at sunset. Don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with that. Have that. But it's not like, well, I wrote this character as a stoic, strong man oh, that's wrong. I will bounce to the furthest extreme. It's like, there is a nice wide range that you can pick from. You know, it's not one or the other. You can have a pieces of both and you can have bits in the middle. It's, it's fine. No, you're right. Because everybody has a different writing style. They all have, we all write in our own, you know, clever way. And the whole point of books is that it, you need to be unique and your characters need to be unique. And yes, there are going to be some characters that are the same. There are going to be some plots that are the same, but the whole point is that you do it with your own clever twist. Obviously with all these suggestions, we are, you know, you take it with a pinch of salt. <laughs> oh yeah. It, Cause in the end it's like everyone, you know, people might be listening to this going, no, I really like my stoic, manly character and that is fine we're not saying it's completely wrong we're just saying you know think a bit different every now and then and these are our thoughts and suggestions on writing male characters I'm done. No, i mean like as we said you gotta you gotta write your story your way so to recap whether you heed our advice or not that's totally up to you talk to your male family and friends and ask questions even if it's awkward be open to feedback, read books with male protagonists, and try to avoid certain stereotypical characters, depending on your story. And we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Do let us know some tips on how to write male characters in the comments or on Twitter using the hashtag The Merry Writer Podcast. If you want to get some extra content, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash The Merry Writer Podcast. You can support our show for as little as $1 a month and can get extra bonus content, including mini episodes that sometimes end up being as long as a normal episode. So tune in next week for another episode of The Merry Writer Podcast, where we ask all the right questions. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Stuffed Bookshelves. Our TBR piles are huge. The music titled Inspired is by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons 4.0.